I'm here on the poncho casting couch uh, with Kilta. How's the flying going? Because you, you tour a lot, so I'm imagining you get access to some airport lounges. Though. I actually like have a lot of fun experimenting with the cheese toasty. <laughs> Today was like a milestone because we made the Mexican toasty for the first time. <laughs> it's literally just the cheese toasty built with Doritos. <laughs> yeah. You've been playing some shows already for uh, Through the Distortion. How have they gone so far? What's the vibe been like at that? They've shows? been really good. They've been some of the favorite shows I've played so far across the country, like the Brisbane one was insane. What's the difference to you between uh, playing like a, a club show or a, sh a show at a smaller venue as opposed to playing at like a festival, you know, something like Splendor in the Grass? I think like the main difference is that when you're playing a club show, you're almost entirely playing to your fans. Yeah. Because there'll pe like, be people that would be buying tickets and, you know, they'll be waiting there to like see you play and everything. Whereas a festival, you get that, of course, but you also get a lot of people who are just there because it's a festival. There's some songs that I wouldn't play at Splendor that I would play at my own shows just because they're songs that like the fans might like but might go like a little bit over the head of people who are just there to like have a good time. Do you party hard either before, during or after you play a show? I wish I could say I do but um, honestly like the day is a long day now like the show's gone to the point where it takes us the better part of the like afternoon just to set up and sound check. By like 12.30 when I finish, like I just want to like sleep. There's a South African rapper on, mm. on Through the Distortion. I wanted to ask how did that come about? I found him on a website called OK Player. What's his name? Espacio Dios. Okay. I found his stuff on SoundCloud through this blog and it was all just like really, really cool and unique, but also like very rough. Um, so I sent him a couple of like ideas and the one that he chose, which is Treasure, was actually like his least favorite of the whole bunch I sent him. but. He said that like when he got in the studio on it, like he just had some ideas that he'd never had before on like other songs. How do you pick the people uh, you want to like remix your songs when you put out like remix packages? Mm. Kind of two things you consider. The first is having like variation across the package. Mm. So for example, like we just did AKU remixes mm. and we got a club one from Load 99, uh, like a more beats one from Fecky and then a like kind of left field electronic one from Alta, so it's good to have like variation but also obviously like i at least have to love the artist is it almost like handing over your baby or something to someone else like do you yeah. ever get nervous about what no, they're going to do with it i mean i get more nervous about them seeing the mess i make when i write <laughs> yeah, like sure. because you're handing them like the ingredients to the song and so like they can go in and see like all the weird stuff you've done you're a drummer as well uh when did you start playing drums were you very young when that when that happened um i was in primary school so I guess I would have been like seven. Like apparently I was on the pots and pans like when I was a toddler as well. So I'm sure your parents love that. Yeah, my parents are both musicians. So oh, okay, they did love it. It's yeah. their fault if anything. How do you think being a drummer has affected the way you produce music as opposed to maybe other producers who don't have that drumming background? Um, well, for me, I normally start with drums and that's the, the way I like kickstart ideas. So I'll normally like go and find like weird drum breaks or like samples. I get like inspired by like strange textures and like, you know, if you have like a snare drum hit, there might be like a little like roll off the back of it that mm. comes in afterwards. And it's things like that, that like catch my ear. And then I will start to like build like a groove around that. And as you've gotten more popular and successful as Kilter, has the way you interact with fans changed at all? Like, have, have you noticed any maybe particularly weird fans or particularly dedicated fans coming to your shows? Back when you first start, you you only get like, you know, messaged by like one dude or like yeah. whatever. And so like, you like talk to them and then you like remember them from back then. And so like, it's cool to see like them still around and stuff. I don't know, my fans don't seem to be like too crazy. Like they don't like wait outside my house or anything. Keep